Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is tutorial six. In this tutorial, we will talk about HOMO2 discussion, partial derivatives, partial differential equations. I am Wei Feng Yin. If you have any questions, you can send me an email. Let's talk about HOMO2 first. Question two, find the distance between a point and the line by a given approach. Program tracing the line with parameter t, then express the distance between p and a point on the line in terms of t. Let this symmetric equation equals to t. Then the line can be parameterized as follow. We need to state t is a real number. Then the distance from point p to a point on the line can be expressed as follow and denote it as f of t. To minimize f of t is equivalent to minimize f t square. There are many ways to find the minimum. One way is to take derivative. Let g pi t equals to zero. Then we can get t equals to minus two. After simple calculation, the minimum distance is seven. Question seven, find the limit of the following vector value functions. In this question, we just, we just need to find the limit one by one. Consider this term first. This term can be written in this form. Then we can use L Hobbitos rule. And the final answer is one. Consider the second term. In a similar way, it can be written in this form. And then use L Hobbitos rule once again. The final answer is one. The limit of the last term is one. It's very easy and I leave it for you. Question seven, part B. As t go to infinity, this turn and this turn go to zero. So the limit is zero. Consider the last term. Net distance equals to y. And then take logarithm on both sides. We have this equation. As t go to infinity, the y hand side goes to zero. Therefore, as t go to infinity, y tends to one. Question A. In this question, we need to solve an initial value problem. Let's start with this equation. The right hand side can be written as this guy. The 
the left hand side can be written as this free turn. And then compare coefficient on both sides. We have that the derivative of s with respect to t equals to minus y. The derivative of y with respect to t equals to s. The derivative of z with, with respect to t equals to zero. So z, z of t is a constant. Let's consider these two equations. Look at this first. Take the, take the derivative first again. We have this equation. Now we can use the thing. It means that S is in this form. Similarly, Y is also in this form. Together with the given initial value, we obtain that S is cosine t, Y is sine t, Z is one. Next, we will talk about partial derivatives and partial differential equations. Can you uh, see the PPT in phone? Yes, yes. Okay. Now uh, I'm uh, talking about the partial derivatives and the partial differentiation, differential equation. And I want to first talk about the concept of partial derivatives. And the first partial derivative of the function uh, fxy with respect to a variable x and y are the function partial f with respect to s and the partial y f with respect to y uh, given by the followings. The first, uh, because it is a derivative uh, with respect to x, so uh, it is not related to y. We just uh, take little step h, uh, x plus h, and then uh, we have uh, minus these two items, and uh, we over them by h. When h uh, is small enough to zero, we can get this uh, uh, partial f respect to s. And uh, the similar one is uh, f respect to y. And the different thing is we take a little step of k uh, in the term y, and we uh, take these two terms uh, using minus sign, and we use the uh, use the uh, this term over by k. And finally, when k is close enough to zero, we can get the partial f over partial f by uh, y. The key for getting partial derivative is to consider uh, this one, partial f with respect to s. Consider y is a constant parameter. And we can use the rules of differentiation we had introduced before. It is all the same. We can just uh, think. Wait a minute. Let's think this thing. is equal to this thing. Because uh, this is not related to uh, x variable. It can be uh, considered as a constant. So uh, the last one, we want to talk about the notation for the first partial derivatives. And there are four uh, usually used notations for this uh, 
partial derivative. The first is partial z partial x, and the second is uh, because z equals to uh, f x y, so you can get the second notation. And the third notation we have introduced before, and the last notation uh, is also is a derivative and respect to x. Mm, and uh, this is similar in partial z with respect to y. Then we can extend from this two variable to our n variable partial derivatives. Uh, first, we want to look at this item. And uh, with respect to x1, then we can consider x2, x3, s4 to xn are all per, uh, constant parameters. And now we take a little step uh, in x1 and uh, the second item x1, and we can uh, minus then, minus the second term and over the by h, over by h, and uh, when h is small enough to zero, and we can get this n variable partial derivatives. And of course, the key is to assume that x2 uh, all the way to xn are all constants, and then we can treat this n variable functions to one variable functions. Okay, last I want to talk about two examples of partial derivatives. And the first one is uh, uh, this here. We want to partial them with respect to z. And uh, the two uh, tools for this is first, chain rule. And the second is uh, This one. We first derivative with uh, respect to A and uh, then derivative uh, B respect to T. Use these two rules, we can get the answers. The first, we just this one. Let, let it uh, take a differentiation and then the, keep the second items the origi original shape and then keep the first item original and then uh, take differentiation the second term to the second term and finally we can get the answer because this item it has no uh, z variable so the answer is zero and uh, the second item it can do the Differentiation, we, can, we apply chain rule to this one. Uh, details is uh, listed here. First, we, we let, let h equals to one plus xz plus yz. And the uh, partial h, Sorry. So this turn will become this one. And the first one, the first one is uh, this item and second one is uh, you can see here is x plus y so here minus h this item yes and then the uh, the third 
term is uh, x plus y. So we can simplify it to get this answer. Okay, the second question is uh, this. We can first uh, calculate uh, partial f with respect to s. Mm, all the same, we use the two rules and uh, get the final answers. And then we uh, let s equals to zero, y equals to pi. And we substitute into this uh, solution, uh, this result, and we can get a final solution here, minus pi. Mm. Here we want. I want to uh, introduce a new uh, solution for you. You can use MATLAB to verify your answer because in here you have calculated the result, but you don't know. Uh, whether it is correct, and you can use use MATLAB to verify it. And the first thing I want to uh, warn you that it is a there is a if there is no steps to demonstrate your answer, and uh, we result to a low grade even zero. Uh, what does it mean? It means that if you if you, if you don't have the explanation, just this and this. If you just have this answer, you will get zero grade. And uh, the first, first you in, in MATLAB, this is the source code. And we first clear all the things in the workspace and the command line. And the second, we defined four symbol variables. Symbol variable. You can, if you don't know what is a symbol variable, you can Google it. Single variable. And uh, then we list the uh, uh, function we want to differ take differentiation, and then we take a use a function provided by the lab, and uh, it is uh, called div. You can Google it in. Uh, to get what does it mean? The first f is the function you want to take differentiation, and second one is the variable you use to use to take differentiation, and uh, you get a result to pd1, and uh, we see the result here. It is the results we have uh, calculated. It is the true uh, right uh, answers. In the second questions, uh, the difference between these two questions is he has he asked us to calculate this one, and uh, we just substitute the x and the y variable with zero and pi respectively, and uh, we can get the results. The functions provided by MATLAB, uh, by MATLAB is the this function subs. Uh, it just means substitutes, and uh, PD1 is the fun uh, the simple function, and uh, the x, y are the variable you want to be substitute, and uh, x is substitute by zero, and y is substitute by pi, and finally you can get the result. The answer is correct, minus pi. So this will uh, shorten your time and you can uh, directly to look at uh, whether your answer is correct and you can just improve your procedures and your final grade. Okay. I want to tell you about the tangent plan, normal vector and the related measurements. The first is the normal vector. Normal vector at a point, you usually uh, 
connected with a, a point here at point M is a uh, point P and uh, this normal vector N is perpendicular to the surface at point P while tangent plane at point P is perpendicular to the normal vector at point P what does it mean it means that when the uh, this surface around point P becomes smaller and smaller he will become very smooth and just a plane if you can imagine and this plane you can just enlarge them and they can be this large so in this uh, local surface you can see and the n vector is uh, perpendicular to the this local tangent plane mm, so the naturally we can uh, put up a question that how can we calculate this n vector it is simple because we know in a plan if we want to calculate a normal vector we can just uh, get two use uh, two vectors in this plan and using cross product to get them uh, example a b vector we just use cross product and the uh, right hand rule we can get the normal vectors directions mm. and uh, just here the normal vector is perpendicular to the surface so it will be perpendicular to the two tangent plane so we use the uh, uh, arbitrary two lines on this plane then using uh, cross products we can get the normal vector even if it, it, it is uh, uh, 90 degree it's okay if it is not 90 degree it is okay because cross products will get a vector which is perpendicular to this to this uh, surface Mm, you can choose two direction mm, which is very easy to cap to be calculated so here we choose x directions and y directions so what happened God. first we use what No problem. I have disabled the uh, notation. The first we use X O Z plan. Use X O Z plan to cut the surface at point P, point M, just here. Use the surface X O Z plan. We shift the, this plane to the point P. And we can get a curve. You can imagine it. There's a curve. And this curve at point P, it has a tangent line, tangent line. And we calculate how to express this tangent line. And uh, we write it down here. I don't want to uh, talk about how to get it, but uh, later, later, a little later. And uh, we use YOG plane to cut the surface. The same, this plane. And we'll get another curve like this one. And we also, we can get the tangent line at point P, of course. And uh, we can calculate it down. And finally, we use a cross product to get a noble vector. So I will tell you why will be written as this one. The first is 
if we have a curve like this in y o z plan and uh, this is point p and the tangent line is here and this theta in mass tangent theta is a partial z partial y and uh, it is equal to if we um, let delta y delta z it means the increasement increase here and here just let uh, delta y equal to one and uh, we get delta z equals to partial z partial y here and so we just write down here partial z partial y and uh, here is one because uh, this plane is y of z plane so the x increase increase uh, is uh, zero so we write down here it is uh, similar in here so i will not spend time on it and finally we can calculate the normal vector using uh, n equals to a cross product b which is an outward pointing normal vector from the this graph you can see and then minus n will be the inward pointing normal vector uh, if you don't know uh, what is, does it mean and you can just ignore it and using right hand principle and you can get the, the true direction of normal vector and i want to uh, tell you the higher order partial derivatives and uh, take this as example the sequence of taking derivatives is as uh, indicated by the direction of the arrow the, because this one is uh, no uh, confusion and this one is no uh, confusions just these two equations and if we use this notation we first partial z respect to y oh. okay uh, i will upload this video to the uh, platform okay no worry and uh, then with respect to z if we use this notation and the sequence is from left to right first respect to y and respect to s you just uh, remember if we use f this notation from left to right but this equation this notation from right to left and uh, if uh, y has a uh, three variables if this one we uh, just first from he in she should be from right to left so first this one then this one this one the last this one okay Uh, if we use this notation and we first from left to the right first x then y x z uh, okay this is the example of the uh, second order partial derivatives of these uh, two variable functions you can uh, look at the details uh, after the class uh, i will not spend time on it it is a uh, little simple on the last one i want to uh, talk about the special higher order partial derivatives and these derivatives will lead to a partial differential equation then we look at this it has uh, three variables and we want to calculate this these things and uh, The tools for solving this uh, is first chain rule and the second one is uh, this one 
we first partial A, keep B, initial shape, and then keep A, the original shape, and uh, take B, uh, the dif differentiation, and can get one. Mm, the details you can go through it uh, after class. Here, I just want you to uh, know how to do it. The first, you should take the first uh, order differentiation and second order. And you can uh, observe that X and Y are symmetry, which is mean that you can uh, substitute X with Y and Y with X. And the results will be the same. So this one will be the same with this one. And you can uh, just give it and copy the answer from here to here, substitute x with y. This is uh, the skills uh, in your exam or some solving, during your solving problems. And uh, partial u, partial t, this is uh, very uh, simple. So his answer is here. Finally, you can add them together, get this answer. And finally, you find it is equal to partial u, partial t. And uh, I can tell you, this satisfies the heat equation in physics. Final, uh, Final part of this tutorial is a partial differential equation. The previous example show one of the solution of two-dimensional heat equation. Here, partial U partial T equals to these two terms adding together. And the heat equation is one kind of partial differential equation, usually written as PDE. PDE is used to govern some natural phenomena. For example, heat flow, wave motion, etc. For example, uh, another famous example is the Laplace equation. When partial u partial t equals to zero, and we can get Laplace equation. And this equation is used to model steady state temperature distribution and fluid flows and so on. These things uh, you don't need to understand why and how. We just need to uh, know this is a very famous equation in physics and the mass. Another well known example is the wave equation. The 1D equation is uh, this one, and the C is the speed of wave. These uh, equations are very important in physics and engineering. Therefore, knowing how to solve them properly is essential. This equation have two ways of solving. The first is a natical, which is mean that you can throw out uh, just derivation, you can get the final result. And we will uh, focus on this one. And second one is numerical solution. Uh, using computer to get the final result. And then the robotics uh, area usually use uh, numerical integration to solve second order differential equation. And just uh, remind. And uh, these are the details of uh, an ethical solution of 1D wave equation. These are the condition of this equation. This here, I circle it is the initial condition and uh, the procedures of solving this in an analytical approach is first get the general solution from this equation general the second is to substitute the initial condition into the general solution to get the uh, specific solution and the left page is the first general solution derivation. And the second page is the specific uh, solutions derivation. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, the first, we use two new variables to transfer this equation to this equation. 
as for why we just use x plus a t equals to zeta and eta equals to x minus a t. The reason for it um, is a little difficult. So uh, the, the teacher will tell, will give the hint. He will just tell you using these two forms to simplify this equation. No worry. Here we just uh, tell you a general solution of it. The first, um, we can substitute uh, these two into zeta and eta, and we take first order differentiation, partial u, partial x, to transfer to this variable, these two variables. And then we take second order differentiation to finally be simplified into this form, second order and uh, clause. And uh, finally, we, we can simplify this partial u partial t as uh, second, then another partial t. We can get, we can get this simply, simply form, the second order. And uh, finally, we, we can get this equation and uh, simplify it into this form. You can notice it's very simple. And uh, he take two order integration, you can get the final result. Wait a minute. The first is that you can integrate with respect to eta, you can get this one. If you don't know why, you can take an inverse differentiation to know, to see if it is correct. Because uh, we take re differentiation respect to partial, partial, uh, this one is partial eta. Because this uh, variable to zeta and it is not related to eta, so it will become zero. So it is, uh, this is correct. So the last, we keep on uh, integration. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we integrate respect to zeta and we can get this one. Mm, this is uh, because the first term, partial u equals to f zeta d zeta. And we take uh, this integration, you can get u, and you will become uh, this. There is another uh, constant term. And because we do the integration with respect to zeta, and it will this constant. Uh, he will including uh, another variable eta. So he will be this form. And because the first term, it is, has no related to an eta, so the integration result will be only related to zeta. And the second term, eta. And uh, we, we substitute zeta and eta with x minus x plus a t and x minus a t. And we can get the general solution. And this one, the ordinary or general solution is uh, this one. And uh, the second step is to substitute the boundary condition into the general solution. The first is to uh, let t equals to zero. And this one you can get f1x plus f2x. It is equals to this term, this term. And uh, we first take the first order differentiation to u and uh, substitute t equals to zero. We can get this one. And the uh, initial condition is this one. And General, we know if we have uh, two variables and uh, two equations, we can get the results. 
And, um, and this is general because it has extreme uh, saturation. Okay. Here, we integrate with respect to S and we will get uh, this result and uh, constant value. And we just list here. Do not forget, uh, don't forget to add this uh, constant value here. And we just list these two equations together to solve f1x and f2x. Uh, you can solve them uh, after this tutorial and we just tell you this is the result. And you can uh, resubstitute f1x x with uh, x uh, plus at. F2x is variable x. We uh, substitute it with x minus at, and you can get the final result here. You can note the uh, this uh, equation has a general solution, and his final form will be determined by his uh, initial condition. Okay, uh, I think this uh, the variation all here is very difficult. And you just know to uh, how to solve them, the, the procedures and this, the center, center uh, procedures of it. And as for why we take these steps, the professor will tell you. And uh, the general solution, I recommend you to remember because it will save a lot of time. If you don't remember, how to deviate? Okay, uh, that's this tutorial. You can ask any questions you don't know, or you can send us an email. We will uh, answer it as soon as possible. Thank you. And now you can unmute yourself to talk, and I have a, give you this authority.